Hello Matrix. Welcome to this lesson on graphs and freefall. Let's start by drawing velocity time, acceleration time, and position time graphs for a ball in freefall moving downwards. The velocity of the ball increases by 9,8 meters per second downward each second. Since the ball is moving downward, its velocity is downward. We often use a negative sign for the downward direction. This data can be written like this. It's important to realize that the ball is still getting faster and faster as time passes. In algebra, minus 49 is a smaller number than minus 9,8. So this might make it seem that the velocity is getting slower with time. However, these negative signs do not mean smaller than zero. They refer to direction, in this case, downward direction. So now we are ready to draw a graph of this motion. We plot time on the x-axis and velocity on the y-axis. We plot our points. Since the ball is moving downwards throughout the motion, all the velocity values are negative. This gives us a straight sloping line. The line has a constant negative gradient. Remember that gradient means delta y over delta x. For a VT graph, delta y is velocity change and delta x is time passed. In other words, delta v divided by delta t. So in units, the gradient is meters per second per second. In other words, meters per second squared. This is the unit for acceleration. This is not surprising because acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So the gradient of the graph tells us the ball's acceleration. Notice that the gradient is negative. In other words, it slopes downward. This is because the ball's acceleration is negative. In other words, in the downward direction. Notice also that the slope is uniform. In other words, the line is straight. This is because the ball's acceleration does not change with time, it's constant. We can calculate the gradient from any triangle drawn on the graph. For example, we can use the biggest triangle shown here. Delta V is minus 49 minus 0. Delta T is 5 minus 0. Including units, this is minus 49 meters per second divided by 5 seconds. This equals minus 9,8 meters per second squared. In other words, 9,8 meters per second squared downward. This is the acceleration of the ball. Now let's draw an acceleration time graph for this motion. Here is the data. The ball accelerates at the acceleration due to gravity, minus 9,8 meters per second squared, all the time it is in free fall. We plot time on the x-axis and acceleration on the y-axis. We plot our points. The ball accelerates at minus 9,8 meters per second squared every time we measure it. Remember that the minus here refers to the downward direction. This gives us a straight line parallel to the x-axis. This shows us that the acceleration of the object is constant the whole time. And now, let's look at how our ball's position changes during freefall. This is the data for the ball's position below the starting point at the end of each second of fall. Since positions below the start are taken as negative, we can write the data like this. Here is a position time graph for this motion. Notice how this graph becomes steeper and steeper. Why does the graph become steeper and steeper? The ball in free fall covers longer and longer displacements. During each second it falls. This isn't surprising because the ball is getting faster and faster. This is because the object is both accelerating downward and moving downward, making it go faster and faster. What does the gradient of the displacement time graph tell us? This graph gradient gets steeper and steeper. This shows us that the ball's velocity gets faster and faster as time passes. In this lesson, we've drawn graphs for a projectile that is moving downwards. There is also a lesson in which you will learn about a graph for a projectile moving both up and down. Be sure to try some of our questions in the projectile motion task video. 
You'll also find helpful information in our series guide at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Goodbye.